Hematospermia, and it's called, is rarely something serious. But I usually have people get it evaluated. Yes, your beautiful jizz had some blood in it. Beautiful jizz. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, everybody. Welcome Dr. Dr. After Welcome to Dr. After Dark. It's a good start. Uh, I'm excited about today's show. That's probably why my mouth is running ahead of my brain. Dr. Drew After Dark at gmail.com. Uh, voice messages, 818-253-1693. And of course, store.ymhstudios.com for the cool merchandise we have there. Uh, we do have a bunch of voice messages I want to get to into, and I want to do a deep dive on the gag couple. We, g- the gag couple, unfortunately, when you call them gag couple, people think gag like a practical joke no i'm talking about gagging this gagging the gagging wife we'll talk about that in a second let's do a voice message to kick it off okay yeah yeah hi my name is andre i ate the girl out and i slept with her and i didn't wash my mouth before going to sleep and now i have um, a bit of a sore throat and that morning i woke up with like some like bumpiness on my lips like a little, little bump in there. Um, uh, uh, gotten much better. Like I, I went through a whole sickness, and now I'm feeling better. But my throat is still red. So uh, I just want to know, like, what can that be? Uh, what could it be if she was really dirty? Thank you, dude. Come on. I mean, first of all, washing your mouth out after oral sex does nothing. Zero, zero. If you are that worried about uh, contracting STD, you have to use a dental dam or something like that. I mean, have you ever heard anybody say you've got to wash your mouth out after sex and that's how you prevent STI? No. Uh, The the dental dam, did did I hear you say what, Annie? Was that you? Wait a minute. I'm the only one that doesn't know what a fucking dental dam is. Look, show me dental dams. They're just a piece of latex. You can actually create it out of a condom. You can cut the tip off the condom, then cut along the long axis, and you get a dental dam. Uh, ba, 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 images. Yeah, they are. These are oh, that's Ugh. kind of they're gross. <laughs> but any, any latex cover to you know that that's really mm. kind of for dental work. Those things. But do they stretch like that? They just it's just a latex. That the green that green one is more sort of typical. <laughs> that, yeah, it's just a piece of latex, a big <laughs> latex sheet. Or they look at all different colors there in the upper left. Now, all the, there they are. Oh. Not a chance. Yeah. One, one for every one color for every day of the week. Yeah, there you are. It looks like a Crayola crayon box. So <laughs> there's uh See, but this is showing that rectum only dent- red, only- rectum red and urine yellow. <laughs> it's <laughs> all your dental damn But colors. this is only showing for uh for dental, for dental work. Use. Yes, I know. We'll say I, but it's it's used for Oh, something. there we there go. Here's one for eating pussy. Yeah, that's it. Uh <laughs> Uh, I have nothing to say about this, <laughs> except to say that you contracted some sort of upper pharyngeal infection, probably a virus. Uh, no way to know what this was unless the doctor looks at it when it's active. And sure, any STD that you can get on your genital, you can get on your mouth. So it could be gonorrhea. It could be chlamydia. It could be syphilis. It could be herpes. It could be all those good things. Each looks totally different. And you have to see it. Now, uh, uh, pharyngeal gonorrhea often doesn't cause any symptoms. So the doctor has to do a swab back there to sort of- Pharyngeal gonorrhea? The back of your throat. Throat gonorrhea. Throat gonorrhea. Often is symptomless without any symptoms. So so it is something you've got to get tested for if you have any concerns. So go get tested. That's fine. And uh, in the future, just don't don't be silly about your risks. I mean- if you're going to take a risk, know who you're with, take the risk realistically, or use latex barriers. More voice. More voice messages. Uh, Hitler, I kind of have a major question that would help me out a lot. Okay. Um, that I mainly come down to is uh, how do I grow better social skills without mm. panicking with mm. anxiety that's yeah. really bad out in public while okay. dealing with people? Okay. I've currently kind of gotten really reclusive due okay. to a head injury and a lot of just family problems and oh, relationship God. trauma growing up. Jesus. I'm really just kind of struggling with mental health and feel like kind of getting out and building a social network of supportive friends would be the most helpful thing rather than any more, I don't know. But uh-huh. main question is just, yeah, how would I build better social skills without Dude. putting myself at too much risk Jesus. or something bad might happen that would ruin my reputation? I'm yeah, going to have to cut that off. Yeah, dude, dude, dude. Wild vocal okay, friend, he, he, he sounds like he's in the dumps. Yeah, I don't. He, 
here's the deal. Uh, if you are, have difficulty with social interaction, exposure and skill is what you need. You need to develop a capacity for it. So that's on one side, you need to be doing these things and interacting with people in such a way that you develop the skill. Okay, that's one thing. The other side, if you have a true social phobia, there are medication. Paxil can help quite a bit with that. Then you talked about being depressed and having trauma and horrible family problems. That needs therapy. You've, if, if you were telling me you had gangrene on your leg, hey, what can I do about it? You go see somebody about the gangrene. Same with your brain. Your brain needs treatment works and you need to avail yourself of treatment if you're having serious issues, which you are. So one is put yourself out there and give it a shot and develop some skills and do it systematically. The other is consult with somebody about maybe some medication for this, but ultimately you need some trauma therapy and some supportive psychotherapy in addition. Next up, what do we got? And also I want to, I want to just say yeah, that like that really uh, hit that hurt. Um, I, I heard old me in that. That really sucked. So well, I just hang on, say, hang on though. I'm going to let you talk to him yeah, directly, but uh -huh. you can be any of the future. This is your future self. What's his name? Andre. Was that Andre? I think it was Andre. Mm. Um, do you, you can get better, yeah, but go the, ahead. Go ahead, old Andy. New Andy talking to old Andy. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that I don't know how you could find out how to, like, you know, reach out or something, but if you do, if you go to therapy, because you sound like you, tr you it, it, I mean, I don't know. I definitely don't know. I'm fucking guessing, but it sounds maybe like a trust, possibly. Well, always, always that's in there. Uh, yeah. If, you if, you've been trauma someone, if you've been traumatized, you don't trust. You don't trust closeness. You don't trust people. That's you, always the way it is. If you can trust someone and go to therapy, I'll go back to therapy. I don't know how the fuck I, I don't know how you can show me that you did. I but love I, it. I'm serious. I'm I dead, love it. I'm dead Why does it need to be contingent on this guy? It's fine. Just go Whatever. Back. That'll motivate this yeah, guy to do it. It's probably me pushing blame, or pushing responsibility. Yeah, it's probably. But but I also like helping people. That's, that's what it is. I, yes. I really like. Yes. I like bringing people up. So well, like, good. if you go to therapy, I'll go to therapy. Good. I, I will keep love you it. updated on the emails yeah. that come in. Please do. At, outstanding. Um, but I do kind of feel like there's some remnants of old Annie in that room in the back there by the bathroom. Have you seen that room, uh, Nadav? The box room? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, the, I, uh, the I, old box room. I, you know, I've given Annie a bunch of shit about ghosts and goblins coming through here, and then I walked past that box room, and I thought, holy shit, that is a portal to another universe in there. It, <laughs> yeah, it really is a scary... Ghosts hide anywhere. It's the crevices in between the they boxes. They are all inside. Who knows what's under there? There might be people under there living. There is a room, <laughs> and it's a rather large bedroom next to the bathroom that we all share here. That I didn't realize. I thought I thought it was like the garage or something. No, no, it's a bedroom that is halfway to the ceiling, filled with old boxes. Yeah. What's going on there? Um, depression. Uh, <laughs> what's going on there? I mean, that that's my that's my head is. That's what that's a that's a it's an artistic rendition of what's going on in your head. <laughs> it's literally it's, like it's, the, a, it's a representation of what your head's like. Yes, it is the physical representation Woo. of my mind. But it's it's like. Basically, with with the studio being here, with me being here, taking nothing here, so I had to buy everything new. Yeah. With getting new stuff, empty yeah. nesting because I don't have roommates yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, Buying new things, it, all of that. I have. I'm telling you, when I say endless boxes, I have endless boxes. I have a new package to open and whatever. So every single day. So what it feels like to me is part of it is sort of comforting because it's a it's an externalization of your internal chaos, right? Yes. But it's also oppositional defiance. Fuck uh, you guys! I'm gonna let this shit just build up. You have to buy all this shit. I have to get all this stuff. Fuck no, it. no, no, no. It's, no? It's, it's not at all like a shot at anyone. Okay. I I think it's funny when I look at it. It is funny, but it's not like to. If you guys never saw it, I wouldn't have minded. It, it's um. We need to put a picture up of it, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll send one in. It, it's pretty impressive. And, and anything that's made out of cardboard shows up there. Pizza boxes, yeah. uh, boxes you throw for his kitchen. pizza boxes in there? Yeah, I don't. But that was a joke. But, right. but there's boxes for his kitchen. <laughs> there's boxes for his kitchenware and stuff like that. I mean, literally anything that has a box is, yes. is in there. Essentially, my head goes, uh, if it's recyclable, then I, I th this is how it started, that <laughs> box room, was if it's recyclable, I'll throw it in here, and then I'll start emptying out because the, the recycling comes every two weeks. 
to uh, what's it called um, to take the big, yeah. right. you know, the, the container away trash. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the reason I heard on why you have a box room is because the you can't just slow bleed it fast enough to get yeah. to empty it out. Yeah, yeah, that was how it started when you were yeah, here. Yeah, now first it's week. now it's uh-huh. saying something much more. Now, well, now it's now it's hoarding. fucking. Well, no, <laughs> no now no. it's I don't want to keep it, but it's like you know how many. To how many every other weeks it would be to get rid of all that? It's sort I'm of just imp- like fuck it. It's just it's I'm sort not, of impressive. It's sort of taken that's over. That's the box room. Yeah, it's taken over. Yeah, I just but can't I, I think it, it would if you if you put like four people on it with box cutters, you could turn it into you know tie it all up and put it out there. But it would take a good four hours. Four people, four hours. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I, I believe it. And yeah. and the only reason I'm not doing it is because I'm still getting fucking boxes. So <laughs> it's like day. I don't want to do it. And then I if I it's gonna if go I to the saw, ceiling. If I saw one more, but I hope it does. If I saw one more box in there after I cleaned it, I would. Oh, I, it can't happen. Because so, I got OCD, so it's like yeah, once I yeah. clean it, that better fucking stay clean. So this yeah, is the thing so about certain kinds of OCD. You, you're, yeah. you're on one ha- side, you let it go, yeah. and on the other, if you clean it up, it has to stay perfectly clean. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's 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 an all or nothing kind of thing. I I've got the same thing. I know exactly what that feels like. Yeah, do you, do like, you have a box room, Drew? <laughs> I, I could easily. I'm, I'm impressed by it. I could easily see that me doing that. Yeah, it could have happened to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this. I think one of the only benefits is now being in, in a place by myself. I, I've never lived in a place by myself. I've always had roommates because I'm afraid of being alone, and like everybody else. And uh, um, so not everybody. No, uh, that's just me. It's you and the ghost. That's the problem. Yeah, Copy living by, your, chief. Living by yourself is pretty dope. Yeah. So, so give me well, a voice message. Give me a voice message. Here we go. Let's get on. Let's move with it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into the ghost that. conversation. I'm afraid, I'm afraid where we're going. I'm afraid how deep that'll go. Too much that. ghost content. Yeah, too much ghost content. I like it. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Jeans. This is Johnny. And I had an incident when I was about 14. And I discovered masturbation at this time. And, well, I would go to my mom's bathroom, clearly, and bust my nuts. And one day, I decided to just bust a nut into the shower tub. And... Basically forgot it, went on with my day, probably played video games or rode my bike. The next morning, I went and looked at the tub, and the same spot where I ejaculated turned reddish-brownish. It came out white and creamy like any other beautiful jizz, but the next day, it looked brown and reddish. I was hoping you could help me out with that and see what all that's about. And T16, T16... Yeah, you can call me Cutter. Yeah, buddy. So, so Johnny, so many, so many things there. What if Mom had found that busted nuts, as you say? <laughs> I bust my nuts. Uh, but brown is blood. Uh, so red or brown in semen is blood. It, it probably was sort of. Uh, less apparent because it was kind of mixed in, and as it evaporated, you see it more prominently. And it's nothing. It's a nothing. It's common for there to be. I mean, I'm assuming this was a long time ago. And so, you know, if you had it right now, I'd say, yeah, go see a urologist. You're an adult. You got to get checked out and make sure. But more often than not, it's a nothing. Hematospermia, and it's called, is rarely something serious. But I usually have people get it evaluated. Yes, your beautiful jizz had some blood in it. Beautiful jizz. Does anybody really think that stuff is beautiful? Any of you guys? Sure. Yeah, I've met a couple, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's keep Some going. Some people love let's it. Let's keep going. Hey, Daddy Drew. Uh, my name is Aaron, mm-hmm. and I have a problem. I cannot stop staring at girls' butts. Mm. I didn't even know I was doing it until my girlfriend almost left me for it. Mm. Thankfully, she's still here. But now that she's noted, told me, I, I can't stop seeing it. I can't stop doing it. What is wrong with my brain? Piss on me, beat me. <laughs> Love you, Drew. Mwah. Yeah. I, I, you know, what? When, when I've seen guys doing that or, or when I find myself, just your eyes just sort of drift around and they, they go to certain areas of people's bodies. They just do. And uh, Chad Bono, I was talking to him once, and he was talking about what happened when he first got put on testosterone replacement. And Chad's a transgender male. And uh, did I say Chad? I meant Chaz. Uh, and Chaz said, you know, the fir- first of all, ev- pretty much every female to male transgender patient I've ever dealt with, Im- first thing they do is talk about how bad they feel for men because they didn't understand what masculine doses of testosterone does to the brain. 
And then I, what I usually prompt them is like, yeah, they, God did that to a 13-year-old male. Imagine what it's like having that in your brain at 13, trying to manage that. It's really ridiculous. But Chaz said something to, to me that I, I found rather insightful. He said, he goes, well, the first thing I noticed is that testosterone was eye glue. No, it, was, it made breast glue my eyes to them. Like he couldn't, he said, I couldn't stop looking at breasts. And I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? That even as a transgender, the testosterone was causing this tendency for the eyes to drift to body parts the way men do. Uh, and I think it's just one of those things. Now, that doesn't mean you have to give in to it, that you can't control it, but you have to understand that that's just sort of, that's sort of the tendency. You guys can relate to that at all? Dude, I still do. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I still can't help it. Like, it's no, it's, it's weird, right? But, you, but in your head, you probably think, well, I like that and I'm doing it because I just, uh, but no, it's it's sort of an automatic thing it's that the automatic. testosterone does. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember it, it happened, I'll never forget because it happened like overnight where I remember uh, I, I was working at Starbucks, and I remember I could not stop staring at the fucking cleavage of every yeah. customer. I'm like, fuck, like, stop. Like, you're looking like a creep. What are you doing? It is weird. It is very strange what that does to our brain. But uh, thank you, Chaz Bono, for, for enlightening me. To It's sort of relieving men a little bit of the what feels like a volitional thing a little bit. But it's it's at the same time, even though because you like it, it feels volitional. You can't control it very well. You can, but you have to really pay attention, right? And and if you're not careful, yeah, you'll find yeah. that's just that's what your eyes do. That's what happens. Because there's also a difference between being like like oh and and being like staring. You know, yeah, like you, you could yeah, and and it, and be let's be super clear that if you're in a relationship and you're with a partner and you're there at dinner and you're staring at somebody else's body part, that is not cool. Pretty, that pretty does not make that. another person happy. That is really hurting somebody. Yeah, that's else. a talking to. Yeah. Yellow tinted butt snot. What do they title these things? Oh boy. I have a slight concern. Phenomenon I've experienced during bathroom breaks. I have clear yellow tinted discharge that seems to preclude prelude a poop. Sometimes I force out a fart, accidentally shart my pants. Most sharting occurrences produce this odd, clear yellow tinted gel substance. My reaction is always I I I. <laughs> is this normal? I've touched too many cameras through the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Much love for you and the boys. Um so yellow, uh, it, it's probably just mucus because some sometimes we, you know, the, the colon can produce a certain amount of mucus. But the fact that it's yellow worries me a little bit because- That means he, infection? Well, it can. And also hemoglobin, hemoglobin breakdown products go sort of green yellow. Uh, and so it worries me that it's some old blood maybe. And so it, it's something that- how old are you? It doesn't say, but you might want to get a sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy to see, make sure it's nothing serious there. Also, uh, a lot of uh, mucus can be a sign of inflammation, inflammatory bowel disease, that kind of thing. So again, I'd see a gastroenterologist get that properly evaluated. All right, let's get into the gagging here now. So let's let's set this up by showing the videos that caused me to fall in love with this couple, okay? At least one or two of them. I'm, you, you got them on hand? Yeah, I got them ready. All right. So I find this, I find what this gentleman is doing to his wife uncannily funny to me to the point where I cannot control myself. And I want to dig into this a little bit. So here's what set it all up. Hey, Lord. Not doing this again. Great outfit. How was your meeting? Not doing this again. It's good, and I have another one, so don't start. Well, I hope you don't puke out in your outfit when I do Not this. Not doing this again. <laughs> Not doing this again. <laughs> <They're>, oh, <laughs> I, I can't do that. I can't. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> you seem to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop. One turn more. One no. more for the kids. No. Turn one it off. One more. <laughs> <laughs> turn it off. What the hell? I'm going to get you again. I know. Let's do it again. Stop. Stop. You know the drill first. There it is. I just ate. Yeah, you just got me. <laughs> All right, fine. So I, I, no more. There's more. Hey, Lord. No. Yes. Let's hear the echo. What happens when I do this? <laughs> 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 Your stomach? Stop. First hockey game? Stop. <laughs> I love his glee in it. It's so funny. I share his glee. Why? Why do why is that so damn funny? So uh, 
And I like her defiance too. Like this isn't going to happen again. And then, blah, <laughs> then it happens every time. So there's a video of her watching your mom's house. Uh, it's uh, let's see. Uh, is it that one? Yeah, yeah, it's that one. Play that one. And look what she's watching. Who are you watching the YMH podcast? Lord, we are on it today. What is that? <laughs> I don't like it. What is that? Hey, you watched this last episode. <laughs> the guy eating raw what meat. Is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mushrooms? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> that almost made me throw up, that, that particular video. Is the guy eating how many year old meat and raw? It was disgusting. It's been in a jar for a year. It I was think. disgusting. Disgusting, disgusting. But uh, I find it infinitely. It, one, I, I it reminded me of one of the uh, sentinel moments of this entire project, uh, Doctor After Dark, when uh, my poor friend Jen Kirkman, we exposed her to the uh, leather sewer diving guy and she jumped off the set gagging just like that and and that was a, a triumphant moment for us all um but so i need to call my wife and find out what's wrong with me you guys up for that for a second sure <laughs> all right i, I really want to ask her what in the hell is the matter with me and i and i and i really this is, <laughs> she doesn't know this is coming so let's see if i can hello hi you're on hi. After, you're on after dark oh hi oh hi so we're watching these videos of the couple with the gagging young lady. <laughs> what <laughs> is? Am I holding this up properly? Is, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Susan, what's what's wrong with me? Why do I find that so uh, funny? What's wrong with me? Maybe it makes you laugh because it makes those guys laugh. No, no, no. I make those guys laugh when I laugh. It, it's, it's me laughing at them. I, and it's the glee, the husband's glee at making her gag that I find the most satisfying. And well, maybe, maybe it's that. Maybe, at, maybe ask that's your, funny because, uh, you know. Wait, Annie has a question. Annie will relate maybe it to her. Yeah. No, I don't hate women. I don't hate women. <laughs> I don't hate women. I don't. It makes me worry that there's something wrong with me that I that I laugh at this, but I don't hate women. Um, but anyway, what's the question? The uh, is admitting you have a problem. Uh, you're right. Ask her what do you do to her like this? Oh, Annie, that's leading the that's leading the the witness a little bit. So the, let's put it this way: Annie I wants to know. Said. It, he said he wants to know if I do this to you in some way. Me? I don't know. Um, yeah, you do. I don't know. You're yeah, doing you it do. right now. Oh, I see. I oh. see. I see. I see. So, oh, so that's interesting. So it's the humiliate, not humiliation, but the, but the putting you, making you uncomfortable. It, it does. <laughs> we all agree that there's an impulse in this of like, you know, like being eight and pulling a girl's pigtails or something. There's something like exactly. that. Yeah. You're right. That's yes. Right now. Good. Okay, that's good. That that helps clarify a little bit. But why the? F <laughs> so I understand the impulse, but why the hysterical funny? It's not that funny to me because like when the kids were little, they used to sit in the back of the car. If one of them threw up, the other two would throw up afterwards. Yep. And I'd have to clean up a lot of throw up. Yep. So I don't find it funny. No, I don't want to see her throw up. I, mean, I do not want to see her throw up. That's what she's reacting to. She's reacting to the sound. Thinking the smell. But all he does is go. All he does is go. <laughs> he just like coughs practically, and she no, that no, makes. But it sounds like throw up, and that some people can, are sensitive. Can't react to That's that. yeah. All right, we're we're now we're going into other territory, completely other territory. <laughs> this is this, this is getting. It was funny to me a few minutes ago. Now it's not funny anymore. So so so. I can make so funny out of TikTok. What? <laughs> I can take the funny out of TikTok. You can. Sorry, you can. You can just. You can just it. suck up the funny. You did a good job. Uh, anyway, it's our kid's uh, 29th birthday, so let's hope they don't make each other throw up. But uh, all right. Well, listen. Thank you for helping me, and uh, I'll I'll talk to you tonight when I'm in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. You, you bet I'll be coming up in May. Thanks. Bye. Yes, oh, that was the funniest oh, sweet, fucking sweet end Drew. to a <laughs> call. He said, thanks, I guess. Uh, <laughs> kind of fucking ruined it all, but anyway. <laughs> that was the fucking best, dude. 
<laughs> You're the best, bro. <laughs> she, I think she missed a lot of it too. I, that's why I was saying it sort of under my breath because she was she was talking over me, so she was too busy with that. Yeah. Okay. So so all right. So not much help there. Uh, a little bit. The, the the timing the timing thing. The the timing thing. <laughs> Woo. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show. And this month, we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. And God knows there are many. Some people think you should wait until things become really out of hand before you see a therapist. That is not true. We should take care of our brain just the way we take care of every other part of our body, our nutrition, our our physical health. And, you know, people are taught that mental health shouldn't be part of normal life. But that's wrong, too. We take care of our bodies, as I said, with the gym. You go to the physician. You should be doing the same with therapy and better help is customized online therapy that offers video phone even live chat sessions with your therapist you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to and as i've said repeatedly i've sent patients i've sent family members and they're excellent therapists and they're more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched up with your therapist in under 48 hours i really believe that one of the reasons people resist going to see a therapist is they don't want to sit in a waiting room and wonder who they're going to meet not going to be the case. It's more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with your therapist in under 48 hours, as I said. Give it a try. See why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. And the Dr. Draft Dark listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash after dark. That is better, H-E-L-P dot com slash after dark. I would like to love to know how the husband found this about her. I, there's a whole line of TikTok out there I stumbled into that I found not funny of men trying to trigger this in their partners. Did you see that? You probably haven't done I've not seen You didn't that do the way. deep dive I did. And literally <laughs> what, what you get is a bunch of guys going, honey, honey, bleh, bleh, and they're looking at him like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Why are you doing that? And it was that's not funny to me. Um, but let's let's dig around a little bit on our, our the couple we're in love with on their TikTok again. Let's get in there. Let's go down a little bit and see where... See, look at some of the other stuff. There's a, yeah, there's What's going on with the pumpkin? I didn't see that one, but I wondered what that was. All so right. let's look at that. It's a little, little Hello. holiday season. I love your pumpkin. <laughs> look at the view. No, we won't. No. <laughs> Happy fall. No. Happy fall when I do this too. No. <laughs> yep. Come on. No. Oh, there she yeah. is. <laughs> there's people watching. Are there? All right, stop. Hello. There's like, people watching. Like people oh, oh my watching God. Bugs are now. We have millions of people watching it. That that actually, that reminds me. <sighs> re remember, I said one of the funniest times, I, the funniest things I've ever heard between you and your wife was the time when we called you and we were asking about like asshole stuff and you were like, yeah, the, the well, the asshole is connected, you see, and if you take a shit, it's going to go ahead and go out the tube. And she yeah. was like, honey, we're at dinner. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Everyone's watching I know. it. And that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I know. Dude, that, we were dying yeah, for I know. that. So that is I think thing. it is. It, it is it's that that's like, part of it so that's that's funny. part of it yeah that's a part of it too is that she's gonna she's gonna reveal herself to the group a little bit god what they've got so many of them i've been up to all oh my goodness all afternoon oh oh let's see that one yeah, in the blue i think they're all jesus they're just I it just goes just on and this. on and on what's, what's the matter <laughs> what's the, is the garbage smell <laughs> the sponges are bad <laughs> hold on What's is it the well, smell triggering the it this time? I, I, yeah, I, now she's just gagging. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> so yeah, garbage smell. You know wow. what's funny? I saw Potter do this. He gags. <laughs> yeah, there was one time I saw him uh, uh, taking out a stinky uh, 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 garbage bag <laughs> from the studio, <laughs> and uh, he literally just started gagging. Like he couldn't. He's just like, I, I can't eat. I can't even. I gotta do this. Can you take this out, man? I can't even do this. Do we need to call Potter? Because I I wonder if he, if we if we made gagging sounds if that would trigger him. Well now then with so, uh, so <laughs> you're so evil bother. dude you're so evil. I, it's just comedy to me. So all right, let's go, go. Let me see the general TikTok again. Let me see if it's anything else. That that does not. It's funny that her gagging at the smell does not interest me that much. Although she has a funny sort of way oh, about her. Because like a weak gag reflex is not funny, but like a something no, that's it's easy the to trigger. timing of it. The the timing of him his glee. I told you his his glee and his sort of participation in this is 80 percent of it for me um Ooh, all right i mean literally every time he pulls out a camera to his wife she knows what's coming right he's gonna go Bleh. let's see that one on the left yeah 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 you look great and you're, you look you better great. be careful Joe. again part two look at that i'm so pissed at you sunset we should get something 
Okay, I hope you don't throw up on your dress. <laughs> <laughs> don't get mad. <laughs> 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 so there's the part you're talking about, Eddie, where you where she's trying to like, get away from doing the, this uh, this thing in front of other people. Oh my God! Go scroll down for me a little bit. I, I'm sorry, you guys. You got to indulge me here. How, how long? When? When does this all start? I mean, has it gone for years? And we're oh, just now I thought it was. Bro. I thought it was all gagging stuff, but it looks like it's not. It looks like it's evolved. It's progressed. It's actually was a family little TikTok for a minute there. What's right. that? Let's see what this is. Do this and put it to your chin. Do this and put it to your chin. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? No, it's not. I well, no they haven't idea. found their lane. I'll tell you where they start finding it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and there we go. Do you know this is it? This is a bad one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's dying of laughing. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> I that's love that great. he's dying. He dies laughing. See, that's a lot of it is his reaction. Yeah, I think me. I think it starts right. Do we have a date on that? Wait, hold on. I think it's happening here. Yep. Oh, oh she's doing it again there. <laughs> uh, November 2020. Like oh, almost it's a, year a relatively ago. new. This is a new behavior. I like. <laughs> I love his glee. All right, guys, can you stop those baby little off? Oh yeah, this is definitely the beginning. <laughs> All right, guys, stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, His laughter. He's dying. Do they have kids? I mean, what's going on here? What do it? And what's going to happen during her pregnancy when she actually does have, no, you know, uh, the first trimester vomiting and stuff? I don't see any kids, but I do see a dog. <laughs> Uh oh, I don't think the, right. I don't well, think we, the dog responds. Oh, what's to going it. on there? Oh, that, oh, oh. <laughs> every time the camera comes out. Come on, what? Come on. Why are you doing it? <laughs> yeah, don't do it like that. Please don't do it. <laughs> you better be careful, Drew. I'm telling you, it's gonna turn into a fetish. You don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I know how this goes, bro. <laughs> it could be. Maybe that's where I'm headed. Maybe that's it. Oh, it's too much. I, what the hell? So, okay. So, so I, we need to talk to these people. Come on, everybody. This is. I got to figure out what this is. Where they are. They they live in somewhere where it gets cold in the winter. Obviously. All right. We'll see but, what we could do. But. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and if anybody has any, if anybody's experiencing this, if anybody thinks this is strictly not funny, I'd like to hear from you. And if anyone thinks it's funny but has an explanation for why it's funny, I also want to hear from you. So, what what I find curious, though, how did we get their footage in the first place? Like when you, when those first three you exposed me to, why did you choose those three? Why didn't? Because well, there's a hundred there. Well, because I think what happened was that I think I I just uh, uh, I was looking through Instagram Reels. Yeah. And then I found that. And then I, I forwarded it to Zola. I'm like, this is great. Prep this. Okay. And then you I thought think it was he pro- And then I think he just kind of went around and looked around. He's like, all right, let's now, prep these other now ones. Now, have too. Tom and Christina seen this? Yeah, they love it too. Okay. Now, have they gone deep like I did? Uh, no. I mean, I think they've only seen the, the three videos that we showed okay. you. Okay. Please, please share with them that there's a whole world there they can partake of. Sure. Uh, I, I particularly like those first ones because when his his glee at having discovered this is more pronounced, <laughs> and later it's a little more sinister. It's like, here we go. All right. Uh, thank you. Do we have name? Are there names on there? Let's let's uh, let's call. Let's uh, thank da- them. I think Big Daddy D Murphy. Big, big Daddy, Daddy D. D. Murph. D. Murph. Uh, big, big Daddy, Daddy Little Lar. Little Lar. Uh, what's the Big Daddy business? Wait, what's it, what does it say? Is, is there there's a YouTube? Uh, no, that's an Instagram handle. Okay, and this was all on Instagram. They have a million followers. Yeah. Oh, my God. People love this puke and stuff. God, that's so crazy. Is Isn't TikTok that awesome? Six, eight, 16 million likes. Yes, sir. Is that TikTok or is that is it's TikTok, right? Yeah, it's this TikTok. is TikTok. Wow, 
How many followers do I have on TikTok? I think I have 12,000 or something. That's incredible. Well, um, so they've discovered something. And to your point, any that kind of, I think, I thought we were in a rare group here, you know, sort of having discovered this, but clearly this is a giant community. Um, I bet there is a fetish group within that, right? Uh, no. <laughs> I right? mean, first of all, yes, but that's not that's not why they're. <laughs> it's not why not, what? That's not why they're they're like super famous. No, no, no. It's not like a fetish thing. It's not a big fetish. Well, is it, uh, it but is. There, there are that many people. It's a fetish thing, but it's not like uh, it's not everyone. Not no one's. It's not some giant community. It's like no, guys, no, no. Oh, these no, guys no, aren't trying one. to get dicks hard with this. No, 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 no. no you're missing my point. Oh, my, what, my what point is that that no, no, no. I know they don't motivate. It. It's not what I'm experiencing. I think most yeah. of those million people are people like me just appreciate the humor of this. Yes. But that there are so many people there within that million, there's going to be this other group for sure. Dude, there's people yeah. within this community yeah, yeah, that yeah. are doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. Yeah. 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 Which is something I got to be reminded of. It's it's because it, my head doesn't do that yep. naturally. Dudes are yeah. touching their dicks to you right now. My well, friend. you said it was particularly that? you and me and your foot that really got people going a few weeks yep. ago. Yep. You, well, so again, yeah, the send us the community. send yeah. us the uh, Instagram handles or wherever uh, Andy and I and his foot show up. We'd be oh interested boy. in seeing it. <laughs> oh boy! Hey, good times. It ain't just gonna be the feet. It's it's gonna be a lot of things, my man. All right. Well, we'll have to see. I, I'm I you. There, there are certain things. I sometimes, you know, as much as I know about the human experience, I many times feel incredibly naive. Incredibly. I mean, don't we all? And as such, we don't know. yeah. And as such, I'm I'm interested. I, I'm interested in human experience, even when it kind of freaks me out, grosses me out. I, I'm interested. So, do we have more TikToks? <laughs> yeah. Let me let me okay. load a couple up. All right. I'll do some voice messages in the meantime. We, I mean, excuse me, some emails. We have so many. Oh my goodness. Raisin nut problem. What is that? Taint cramps. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Uh, my bridge, I mean my taint gooch happy trail, bridge to nowhere, blah, blah, blah. Every now and then I get cramps in my gooch. What's that all about? It's something that can be caused by coming a lot. Can it be stretched in a healthy way? Touch my camera through the fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is called a pubococcygeous muscle spasm. It's a spasm of the pelvic floor musculature. Men and women can experience it, but it's a little more men. And yeah, anything that, that's stirring up that region, whether it's... Um, yeah, almost anything can trigger it, frankly. Uh, and but it's very uncomfortable. It, it feels very visceral, like like almost like being kicked in the nuts. And you can put pressure on there, try to release the muscle a little bit. Um, it it is a, essentially a sling muscle that goes from actually the coccyx all the way around up to the pelvic to the pubic bone. And uh, it's usually about just breathing deeply and letting it pass, and to don't do those things that stir it up in an unhappy way like that. I got a question for you. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So what the hell, man? Like, so once every other week, you call me Nadav for like hours. I do. And a lot of times. You, you'll, really? You'll do and and it's like I get it. You know, like I, I do similar shit all the time. Where you just forget. It's, it's whatever. Okay. But how the fuck do you remember cyclogalangenal before shamal the look gangling yeah. fucking it's, nerves? How do you remember all that shit? Yeah. Like it's it, nothing. It it is it is. That's a really <laughs> that's actually a good question, because a, a, the way medicine is taught. It, it's like a language. I, I remember the first Whoa. years of medical school, I was thinking, God, this is like a giant language class. It's just a huge ton of information and vocabulary that you jam into your head, and then you apply it from then on. And the application is much like the speaking of a language fluently. Once you sort of learn it fluently, it's just in you. You just have it. And And medicine is very much that way, both from the standpoint of understanding the physiology remembering the vocabulary and the anatomy it's just sort of there and then having a a judgment around it in a clinical setting for a given individual that's all this it's 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 an experiential learning much the way languages are kind of experiential and so you just it's in you it's just in you it's just it's like saying you know did you do you forget how to speak english it would be the same thing for me forgetting all this material that i've been using for all these years Nah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it does it does make sense, and it's it's awesome. I want to say like I admire it. It's just well, I, and you'll see, see like, you you don't notice you, pull out. you don't notice it as much when I trip because I I don't know what it is. I I think it's because I'm tr you know traveling and I've been sleeping and stuff. Then I I really will start to trip over my words and I'll transpose names and things. I, I and I do it when I'm speaking publicly at a podium too, so I have to I have to like watch it. 
but you don't notice when I do that with medical terminology because you don't know the, the oh, that's what I'm. True. Yeah, you know it when I get your name wrong. That's <laughs> then fair, you that's know fair. it. So yeah, but, but, <laughs> that's true. You might say fucking Galorian. Right, I do stuff like this all the time. I, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. All right, I got all a right. couple TikToks. All right, let's do it. Mind your business. I'm getting my boy from the little trunk for later on tonight. Getting what? Mind your fucking business. What's he doing? What'd he say? I always kind of miss that first part. Let's see if we could figure that out. Uh-oh. Mind your business. I'm getting my boy from the little trunk for later on tonight. Oh. Mind your fucking business. Getting his boyfriend drunk. I see. He's preparing to masturbate is what yeah. he's saying. Uh-huh. And he's pouring, is it beer or is that hard liquor? I can't tell what that is even. Some Jack Daniels. Is it Jack Daniels? But it's at least in a Jack Daniels bottle. So Jack the Daniels knows? seltzer. There we go. <laughs> oh, hysterical. Well, thank you. I'm glad your boyfriend is there. A nice sink with all that garbage in it. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's a cup do, and a bowl. Wait, what is it? What does his uh, T-shirt say? By the way, some people just need a high what? High five. Some people just need a high five. Oh, but there's more. And oh, to re- the face. Oh, okay. Well done. All right. Next one. <laughs> Next. Not funny. Not like my... Oh. This is terrible. Is it an animal? It's a raccoon. Oh, Jesus. You are a bad motherfucker, bro. What did he do? Uh, fight the shit out of him. Yeah, I know. Raccoons are, can be brutal. That's how you get rabies. Uh, indeed. I, by the way, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the rabies, uh, what I learned about rabies the other day. I didn't... I'd never seen rabies, and I didn't know that it, they could be dormant for so long. That was an education for me. Yeah, how scary, huh? That's yeah, funny. Yeah. That's what wakes you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, I mean, I, oh my I, God, rabies. I was <laughs> up in the middle of the night. I, I didn't get up and think, hey, I need to masturbate like any does. No, I, I got up and thought, you know, like, what are you doing? Why are you delaying any, another second? Um, no, I was. I woke up and I started thinking about the what I'd learned. Uh, you know, that was that they, they, we've in the last like four shows we've done a lot of medical stuff and it's been kind of interesting and fun. So, okay, what else you got there? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This is like a like a aquarium or something. That's the guy. A, that's a shark tank. Oh my god! Uh, I believe that's the Austin Aquarium. Really? That happened in Austin, and and that was like a dare or something for some money, maybe. Uh, I hope for money. Wow, <laughs> um, not so smart. Uh, but hey, man, uh, you get a little, few TikTok likes from that, I guess. How is no one talking about how that guy laughing sounds exactly like Bert? Bert? Yeah, no one the said guy that. laughing. Yeah, the guy that's filming. Let's hear it again. L- listen to his laugh, dude. Yeah. That's Bert. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Oh, you nailed I it. Completely it. I completely missed it. Completely missed that. You are absolutely right. That is Bert. I like the way people start screaming though when the guy goes into the tank. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I Bert. Mean, what do you, you if you saw someone in a shark tank? I, I would. I would just go. What the? You know. What are we doing here, guys? Why? I'd be like, all right, guys, we're going on to the next stop. We're done with the aquarium. Yeah, honey, let's go home. All right, what else you got? That Ooh. is Bert, though. Well done, yeah, any yeah, You're gonna. Yeah, Bert. You're gonna love this one. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Would you ever eat something like no, that? No, I'm not into the in, insect larva if I can avoid it. But you wouldn't why, even try it. What if you why, love it? Why is it always women in these TikToks? No, that, that's that's not true. There's there's men to do it. There's, is there, are there? I just never things. see it on TikTok. Yeah. All right. I mean, women are generally more appealing to look at. Period. Yeah, I guess anything, that's true. So. That is true. Well said. All right. What else we got? Uh, oh, you're gonna love this. Oh one. Jesus. I'm always scared. Yeah, I, no, no. Get, and get out of here. Come Gary, on. get the fuck out of here. Oh, your son of a bitch. I'm going to kill your ass. Oh. You know, your underpants are popping out from underneath your belt. Oh. Shit. Oh. I don't have a pot holder. <laughs> it's inter- always fun to see when people get older, they get so irritable, right? Well, they, I think it's also they got a shithead son and that he constantly does shit to them. So they know something's I, I, happening when the camera's on. Yeah, but I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to kill your ass. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> Thank you, Dad. Thanks, buddy. All right. Anything more there on TikTok? Um, we'll go back to voice message. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised that you didn't enjoy that one because I feel like that's the exact same note. Yeah. As that. As that. Uh, oh, let's e- let's examine that a minute. Because that's the exact same note because it's essentially like a like a I'm I'm gonna do something shitty to you, but you know I love you. You, you know I love you. I'm fucking with you. Like, it's but a joke. but I I normally he, he so here's what this is the thing. I, I've seen those videos and I do like them, but the, the, the subjects got to be in on it a little bit. Remember I told you the, the gagging chick lady, Laura. Yeah. Um, uh, cause she's she, smiling. She's smiling. Yeah. I, I remember you and I, we first saw her, we talked about the fact that ladies don't giggle, don't smile, do not give him anything because now it's on. As soon as, if you're in on the joke with us, that's the green light for us. And oh, I would yeah. argue the same thing here. This guy really looks horribly <laughs> agitated. It's like it's uncomfortable. But if he were in, I like, oh, you got me. God damn you, asshole. I would be, I would be cool with it. I see. So if it ended with a laugh and he was, if, like, if he were in on in any way, I in see, any way, if yeah, because fair, yeah, you got to be in on the joke. You know what I mean? For me to be cool with it. So. That's fair. Actually, that, that's a that's a real big distinction for me too. For these, like, there's a there's a big fucking swing of prank videos growing yes, up that became yes. such a huge thing. Yes, and sometimes and, yeah. they're. I mean, look at look at Jackass. You know, Jackass they do uh-huh. horrible things to each other, and then they get up and laugh at each other. Right, right? now right. sometimes not. Like what was what was it? Uh, I forget the guy's yeah. name and the snakes. He yep, did that. Damn. I yeah, remember that one. Yeah, that one seemed to have gone too far. And guess what? I didn't think that was so funny. I mean, it was a little funny. Um, oh, he was like shaking, I remember. Yeah, it was like too much. And and it's and even, you know, it's interesting also. So when Steve-O got sober, the way I, you know, and he became a friend of mine. He's always been a friend of mine, but but he be, I became, I started getting more empathically attuned to him in his sobriety. And when he would get in some of those, like the Pucano Supreme, when they had him in that uh, in that porta potty and threw him up in the air, the whole oh, thing, yeah. he, it was. I could tell it was really scary and really disturbing to him, and and that bothered me. It was like no, I wasn't wasn't so funny. So that's interesting. Oh man, I do. Wow, I do remember that one too. And yeah, yeah it was the same thing. But I think for me, it was more of like a. I got afraid of like claustrophobic spaces. Right, you know, like, but but if he were laughing and loaded and some the whole way wasn't feeling anything, right. it wouldn't be so bad to watch. But That's it was true. really hard to watch. That's true, actually. Yeah, your fear does get like heightened if you see someone else scared. Yes, yes, because yes. yeah. you can you can sort of make it a cartoon in your head. You know what I mean? If 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 it's all ha ha funny. Right. All right, what's what you got a voice message for me? Yeah, yeah. It's me, David. I have a question for Dr. Drew. I took a multivitamin earlier on an empty stomach, and I knew it was probably not a good idea, but I I was driving, and I had to race home to to throw up. Mm. I barely made it through the door. I barge in. I get into the bathroom. I threw up so hard that one of my balls went up went up inside of me mm-hmm. and it wouldn't come back down <laughs> and I started panicking I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital but I've seen UFC fighters get kicked in the balls and, and jump up and down real hard and, oh. and knock it back down Jeez. and so that's what I did and it fixed it I want to ask it, Dr. Drew why that happened well, what holds it up there where is it going it's... did they get tangled together No. my balls were high and tight I have never seen you laugh like that at a question. It's <laughs> so funny. So, so it's called the cremasteric response. There are muscles around the testes that pull them up inside. They're designed to essentially do it when it's cold, right? You know, you go in if you're in a cold water. But they will also, you can actually roll all the way up into the inguinal canal. When, when you were born, or before, just before you are born, your testes are up in your back by your kidneys, and they come down. They start where the ovaries are, essentially, because we all start as female, and then we evolve into male. And the male uh, testy drops down and drops into the testy, but there's still a track there many times where they can roll back up, and the cremasteric response will do it. It's it's a nothing. It's a nothing. Um, let's see. Raise a nut problem. Halo. Hi, mm, hi Hitler. Hey Hitler. It is ex- <laughs> I'm a 25 year old male. Got diagnosed with hypogonadism. Uh, 24. I do 140 of test cypionate a week. Feel great. However, used to have big swings. Used to have big swinging come bags. Again. Don't call me daddy. After a year of uh, TRT, I have baby balls. I don't really care about the size. It makes my Johnson look bigger, but when I have sex or get cold, my left nut will go up into my pelvis. This is very much like this last uh, voice message. I push it back down. You can do that. You can actually just push it back down. 
I heard that uh, can lead to testicular cancer. No, no. Testicular cancer is if the testing never comes down during that process of descending that I was just describing. Then the doctor has to go up and surgically bring them down. It's a different thing. Uh, my doctor prescribed uh, HCG. My boils will get back to regular size, but the HCG makes the, my estrogen go crazy, so I don't like taking it. Um, listen, I hope you're seeing a endocrinologist because if you're taking so much testosterone that it's shrinking your testes, that is not replacement. That is now extra physiological levels of testosterone, and that's concerning to me. And why do you have hypogonadism? Why? Why did that develop? Uh, it, I mean, that doesn't hypogonadism do to what? So that needs to be explained, in my humble opinion. Mm. Voice message. Hi, Dr. Mommy. My hey. boyfriend and I have been together for a little over a year. Mm. We started as friends and roommates, but quickly became more. Mm. We flirt and are affectionate, but sex has been an issue and has now stopped. Ooh. He always had a problem coming during sex, before mm. me, during me, whatever. Um, so far, we've tried condomless sex, but the pills pretty fucking terrible and it didn't really help anyway oh, yeah. um he had his hormones checked he's now on clomid he recently has noticed his morning wood is coming back oh, yeah. uh, the other issue we may have identified is he does the iron grip which when he makes white um so uh -oh. we've been trying to get him to cut that out uh -oh. he still masturbates every few days uh, i was the only one he used to initiate sex but uh -oh. i've kind of stopped because it Sex has been kind of disappointing for us. Um, for me, it still feels great. It's just a bummer that it doesn't give me that sweet, sweet load. Um, I'm wondering if you have any advice. Are we on the right path with Clomid? What's the best way to defeat the iron grip? Um, oh, no. Should he stop masturbating for a certain time? Or should I, you know, also, should I still be initiating sex in the meantime? I don't know. Give me my reward. Thanks, James. Give me my reward. Um, this um, is sort of a mess you know, um, for so many reasons. Uh, so first let's talk about the fact that he has low, presumably low libido, low testosterone. Why? What's the diagnosis? They went so far as to put him on Clomid. It's pretty serious. Why are they doing that? What's happened? Was he on steroids at one time? I mean, what is going on here? They usually we put people on Clomid that have a, you know, like been on anabolic steroid related low testosterone. That sort of kickstarts things sometimes. But what is going on? Why is that happening? Absolutely, that needs to be explained, number one. Number two, it's not so low that he's not masturbating. So he's still ejaculating every few days, and he's doing it in a way that sounds unnatural as it pertains to regular sexual uh, sort of stimulation. Why is he doing that? Is he, got, is he doing so much masturbating that he has to do that? And is he porn addicted? There's something really missing here. And then you initiating, yes, by all means initiate, but he's not having an orgasm during sex and he's not interested in sex. I mean, why? What? There, there's so many missing pieces here and you're not really asking the questions. You're just sort of going, well, let's solve it, let's solve it, let's solve it. But, but before you can solve something, you have to understand what it is. And I'm not at all clear what it is. I, I, I mean, it could be a lot of different things here that do this. I, anything from trauma to sexual orientation to... He's not that into you. I, who knows? I mean, it's it's usually not that, frankly. Got, a man is with you because he wants to be with you. <clears throat> but the fact that he, I mean, how low was, why did they, a million questions here. So you here's the first order of business. Get to an endocrinologist, somebody who really understands these things and get a diagnosis. What is the diagnosis here? Number one. Number two, there needs to be, I would say a couple, at least a couple's therapist in here that's asking these questions of him with you there to understand what is going on and try to solve it. That That's where I'd go with that. Got any other female callers? They're always so much more Ooh. interesting. Not They're not more interesting. They're just uh, funnier, let's be fair. <laughs> they're usually funnier. All right. This was a sad one. By, by, me. That, by the way, that, confusing one. that uh, yeah. I'll just be fucking real yeah. since go ahead. Uh, the world knows fucking everything about me at this point. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, th that, 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 was, that was me too, by the way. Um, Were you masturbating excessively? Or? No, um, it turned out to be... It, it was with intimacy, so I just had the intimacy an disorder. Yeah, that's a, that's intimacy, remember I, I I did say trauma as one of the possibilities, mm -hmm. and that's where the intimacy disorder comes in. Yes, that does happen. It's and yes, not uncommon. And speaking from a dude who was there, please keep initiating. Please keep initiating. Yeah, Do keep initiating. That. <clears> but but what bad. I find bizarre is that you you didn't get put on medication for this. You know what I mean? They put him on clomid. What the hell? Well, I also didn't. I didn't go to oh. the doctor. Right, right, of course not. So. Yes, I know. <laughs> On brand? I, yeah. I get very bothered with my peers treat things when they don't know what they're treating. That, that's always a very, I, I mean, what are they doing? What, what you, no diagnosis, no treatment. So. What if I just straight up came in and said like, 
I, I need this. Like, I know, I know I was on it before and I need it. Uh, there are situations where that's okay, but I've got to see some sort of something that helps me understand what we're doing. Well, that, I, well, I could tell you, I don't know. I don't know if he, if it bothers him as much as it bothers her, which I yeah. imagine it does yeah. or extremely more. Yeah. Um, then he will do his own research like I did mm. and try to, uh, try to find whatever, like whatever you can do to just get rid of this fucking issue because yeah. you know, you know, it's an intimacy yeah. thing somewhere yeah. deep down, but you want to just fix it, just fix it, get it the fuck out. Of it. So you'll take any fucking pill you can. And, and I would do that. I'd go to a doctor and, and I'd be like, yeah, I, I know I need this. So just right. load me up with that. But, I but I, fix you're, it, you're absolutely saying. correct. That does happen. And, and I would argue that's much the way say, because sometimes there's porn addiction and stuff mixed into with this, with these intimacy disorders. And much like addicts, alcoholics are always looking for a pill to fix them. Yeah. It isn't fixed in a pill. This isn't fixed in a pill. Ah, uh, unless he really has some diagnosed condition that he's, they're treating. And that's sort of why I'm upset about this. All right. What else you got? Hi, Dr. Drew. It's Jessica from Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. I have a sort of weird question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been brought up before, but it is Brown related. So here we go. I don't know why, but I have this sort of subconscious fascination of having people find my shit. I shit outdoors sometimes, and sometimes even in just public washrooms, I won't flush the toilet. And I don't have like a um, like a sexual reason as to why I don't get off on it, but I just do that. Do you know why? Thanks. Love you. Because of me be me. <sighs> What was that? What was that? Maybe what? she left this while taking a shit. Huh? What was that? <laughs> Let's go. Well, I, I, I like the way Jessica's like, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this thing. So, um, yeah, there can be fetishistic kind of things like that, but it doesn't sound like that's what you have. It's probably, you know, it. it it's, a, it's a, we get these weird fascinations locked into us, usually around kind of uh, experiences in childhood that, that, exceed our ability to regulate this way i think about it so you know something happened somebody found your shit when you were a two-year-old and made a big deal about it and you were affected or scared or aroused in a way that sort of shattered the upper limit of your little brain's ability at that time to, to manage it and it becomes an attraction remember i've talked about how trauma causes causes attraction so you're attracted to this experience over and over again it's really the same old repetition compulsion or also called a traumatic reenactment that is from any other trauma so it's not that you had i mean it's not necessarily the case you had some sort of major major childhood trauma but but some experience around leaving a bowel movement was somehow more of a little T to big T trauma zone that exceeded your ability to regulate and it sort of wired in this sort of attraction to that again and now you're reenacting the trauma. That's all it is, just a basic thing. Um, it's an unusual thing, but I've heard lots of different unusual versions of this same phenomenon. Um, you, it's, you know, I sometimes think that foot fetishes go in this same zone, but that is more explicitly sexual, so... Wow, what an interesting show, everybody! Um, we did I, it. We did it. We um, uh, and I'm leaving. I'm leaving you all with the uh, the charge to get me in touch with uh, Lore and uh, Big Daddy, whatever his name is. What's Big Daddy's name again? Big Daddy Murph. Murph, uh, D Murph, whatever. We got to get him. Uh, and I, I got to see. I got to hear more history. Uh, you guys got to help me with that. And then you're going to tell me if if I'm off base for thinking it's funny, or if you also find it funny and have an explanation as to why. We're going to learn about one another this way. So appreciate it. Again, uh, Dr. F. Dark at gmail.com. You can send those observations in there and your questions as well as the voice messages to 818-253-1693. And do not forget the merch at store.ymhstudios.com. I will see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.